to Smyrna and to the angel of the church in Smyrna write the words of the first and the last who died and came to life I know your tribulation and your poverty but you are rich in the slander of those who say that they are Jews and are not but are synagogues of Satan do not fear what you are about to suffer behold the devil is about to throw some of you in prison that you may be tested and for ten days you will have tribulation be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who conquers shall not be hurt by the second death. The message to Pergamon and to the angel of the church in Pergamon write, the words of him who has the sharp-edged sword, sharp two-edged sword. I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. You hold fast to my name, and you did not deny my faith, even in the days of Antipas, my witness, my faithful one, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you. You have some there who hold the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak, putting a stumbling block before the sons of Israel, that they might eat food sacrificed to idols and practice immorality. So you also have some who hold the teaching of the Nicola That's right. Nicolaitans, Repeat then, if not, I will come to you soon and war against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who conquers, I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone with a new name written on the stone, which no one knows except him who receives it. So Happy Friday, everyone. Today in the lectionary uh, cycle of readings, we're, we're still in the second chapter of Revelation. Uh, and this time we get a message to the church in Smyrna and Pergamum. Uh, so Smyrna was uh, the capital, or, or like the, it's called the, the crown of, of Asia. A very affluent place, rich with trade and diversity and uh, all these wonderful things. Uh, it, a good place to live. Although uh, it it was a seat of emperor worship and so there was a big uh, temple to the emperor and once or twice a year people made pilgrimage and the citizens of, of Smyrna uh, would have to confess em the emperor Caesar as Lord. Um, and so if you were a Christian living in Smyrna, uh, obviously that, that wasn't a good thing to do or that wasn't doable. Uh, and so uh, they started facing tremendous amounts of persecution, uh, affecting their, their businesses, their way of life. They also had uh, sort of uh, what I would call Pharisaic uh, Jewish ad adherents who were spreading uh, lies about them, like they're cannibals and this, that, and the other, all that kind of stuff. Um, so if you were a Christian living in Smyrna, it was a odd place an odd time because uh, on one hand you're surrounded by affluence and and luxury and, and easy living in a safe environment uh, but your love for Jesus separated you from those things uh, your your love and commitment and confession of Jesus as Lord uh, brought hardship in the midst of, of plenty um, and so uh, they are commended this morning uh, the, the uh, Christians in Smyrna, they're, they're, they're commended for their steadfast faith. They're also warned that uh, it's going to get worse. Uh, but if they 
but if they keep the faith to the end, uh, the second death will not get them, which is the death of the soul or uh, damnation and things like that. Um, we know who the angel or the bishop of, of Smyrna was. Uh, Polycarp was Bishop St. Polycarp, uh, who was a very uh, extraordinary fella. Was, was bishop there and, and that's how he met his end. He refused to confess Caesar as Lord or the emperor as Lord and, and bow down to him. Uh, and so he was burned until dead. Uh, so that's how he met his end um, as did other Christians there. So I'm gonna leave that alone for a while, uh, for, for just a second. So uh, affluence, uh, easy life, a safe place to live, but with the confession of, of Jesus as Lord, uh, all these hardships and oppression and persecution and uh, things came, came upon you and made it very difficult to live. Uh, and so you were kind of stuck uh, in the midst of plenty, uh, having poverty. And so that's why the, uh, in the reading this morning, you heard him, you heard them called uh, rich in, in faith or, or rich in the midst of poverty. So they were talking about eternal things. Next, we moved to Pergamum, uh, which was about 50 miles uh, to the north of Smyrna, uh, into the church there. And so they are also commended for, the, for their steadfastness and faith, for their defense of, of, of the community, for, uh, for holding fast to all those things. Uh, but they're given a warning, the warning of, of, of worshiping Balaam, uh, Balak. Balaam. Uh, and so if we go back to the Old Testament, we'll see that uh, Balak, Balaam blah, 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 was, uh, could not, he was a prophet sent to curse Israel, uh, but he could not issue forth curses. Only blessings would come out of his mouth. So he devised uh, a plan to, to, to be the ruin of, his, of, of, of Israel. And so what he did to the Israelites was uh, he brought in uh, lovely foreign maidens to uh, dance for them. So uh, <laughs> in my modern mind, I'm thinking like a, a adult dance club or something like that. Uh, you know, he brought them in uh, to corrupt them and and it seemed to work. Uh, so, so you had uh, that sort of thing where there's sexual Im immorality. Uh, today would probably be like pornography, thing, you know, things like that. Uh, Things you shouldn't be looking at, uh, and then there are also the the Nic Nicolaitans, uh, which which is uh, also most people think. Although there's a tremendous amount of controversy, and you can get way into the tall grass in that one. Uh, but sexual immorality there too. So so you had the the problem in Pergamum was not. Uh, a lack of, of faith and defense of the faith and a robustness of faith, but but you had uh, Gnosticism, hedonism, kind of kind of uh, slipping in there where you had where you had the 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 faithful of of Pergamum uh, really saying, well, what we do with our bodies doesn't matter, and if everybody's consenting, it's great, and uh, you know what's what's the big deal and. Uh, you know, so they they sort of uh, justified themselves in, into a place where where they started to say what I do with my body doesn't matter. Uh, what I do with other people it doesn't matter. It's what's in here. So as long as I defend the faith uh, from from false teaching, as long as I do this and do that, and as long as we keep all the you know sort of rules and things, yeah, a little immorality on the side, a little you know hedonism. It's not going to hurt anybody. And so they're warned strongly about that. Uh, and in their defense, uh, in, the, in their defense, Pergamum uh, was, was a, a sort of center of pagan worship. So it wasn't that they were just sitting around bored, uh, thinking of devious things to do. They were surrounded by uh, cultic practices and, and worship that was hedonistic, uh, that, that was sensual, that was erotic, that was, what was all these things. So, uh, they find themselves sitting in the center of, of all of that and, and, and tempted, uh, everything kind of started to get blended into one. And so, uh, and so they've kind of fell into that. Uh, so like I said, not entirely, they were sitting around in the desert with nothing around them and decided to do that. But, uh, the, the world around them was doing that. And they were like, eh, 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 and, and that, that's where they ended up. Uh, so there's some thoughts for us today, uh, you know, from Smyrna, uh, 
kind of reminds me of today, and I, I know I didn't talk about this specifically, but there's a lot of unrest and, and things like that. And uh, as Christians, we find ourselves in the, in the midst of, of extreme. If you're watching this from these United States, um, you've, you find yourself in the midst of uh, wealth and privilege and relative safety, and uh, but then also anger and fighting and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, and we're called to keep ourselves above that and to love people and to, and to uh, call people to repent and call people to to truth and beauty and light uh, and not lose our way in that. So the, the lesson for us from, from Smyrna is, uh, although the culture around us is one thing, when we profess Jesus, uh, we remove ourselves from that. And sometimes we find ourselves in very difficult places. Sometimes we find ourselves against very difficult odds uh, where where we're asked to bow down to, the, to uh, different philosophies and, and religions, uh, but we can't. We have to stand fast. Or, and also in Pergamum, uh, where they defended things, but uh, sort of uh, <laughs> got, got in bed with, if you, if you will, the uh, culture and religious practices around them, philosophies around them, and incorporated those into their life of faith. Uh, and so they uh, let the culture around them influence uh, in not good ways and become a part of uh, their life to the detriment of their faith and to the detriment of, of their relationship with Jesus. So uh, we, the lesson for us is we have to be careful because uh, in these United States, that, that same thing abounds. We, they don't have temples to Artemis or Ares or, or things like that, but, but we do have temples. <laughs> we do have uh, different philosophies and, and temples to those philosophies. And, and, and to those religions, pagan religions, um, like sexuality. If you don't think that is a, a god, I, I, I ask you to watch your TV, open up a magazine, look at the billboards driving down the road. It is. Uh, money, uh, wealth, power, yeah, all of those things. So we're surrounded by a lot of uh, pagan, uh, although Again, in our time, we don't call them that uh, in, in the same way, but we're surrounded by a lot of philosophies and uh, practices and, and religions that, that are contrary to the love of Jesus. And so we have to be on our guard and not incorporate those into our lives or not say, oh, well, it's, yeah, no, this is okay, that's okay. Uh, or, hey, this is really cool. Let's, let's start doing this without careful contemplation and, um, and looking at things. So, in the middle of everything, but separate from everything. So uh, consider those things in your life today and uh, pray for our nation and pray for healing and wholeness. And uh, don't, don't be a part of the problem by uh, condemning others and, and being outraged at all this and causing further division. Uh, be a part of the solution. <laughs> Through love and understanding and, and working with others and, uh, and trying to remember that most everybody's hurt and scared and angry and uh, a lot of different opinions in this world today. Um, and screaming at each other hadn't worked so far, uh, so maybe it won't. Uh, anyway, love y'all. God bless you all. Uh, have a, a great Friday. Uh, have a good weekend. Stay safe. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I mean.